it's the greatest challenge. I mean, those that say we have to f have fewer words in the sermon today because people's attention spans are such that they're not going to stay with you. That's a daunting thing to hear. I haven't succumbed to that temptation. I, I think the more people are immersed in words and the greater the challenge is to get their attention to the word being proclaimed, the more we have to work on the preparation of the proclamation of the word. I spend more time preparing, on, preparing for preaching today rather than less. You'd think after 30 years this would be it easy. That means more time in the word, letting the word speak to me in new ways that I perhaps haven't heard before, more time in prayer, more time in the context of the here, which is a challenge for me because I'm preaching in different contexts every Sunday, every week, knowing something of the cries of the people that I will be proclaiming the word to, the hopes, the struggles, the context, the language, the images, the songs, the rhythms of their life. So I think uh, the more verbal, oral uh, cu the culture is, the greater the challenge is for the preparation and the proclamation. One of my frustrations is that I hear so much critiquing of preaching today from lay people. I was just in Pennsylvania. A woman said, I visited seven churches before I found one where I really sensed the pastor believed the word he was proclaiming. That's a daunting critique that somehow we are not letting the living word speak through us in our proclamation. I think there's enormous pressure in our very consumer-oriented, competitive, religious marketplace that pastors feel daily the pressure to hold their members for fear that if they're not held captive by this ministry, by the programs of this congregation, by this church's worship, they will simply walk with their feet and go and find another place where their needs can be met. And if one's orientation to ministry is a marketplace, competitive, consumer-oriented culture, I think there will be a temptation to forsake the radical gospel of Jesus Christ. There will be a temptation not to speak words of both law and promise. There will be a temptation to try to adapt to the hear in what we think they want to hear rather than what we believe they need to hear. And I hear pastors saying they're almost immobilized by that. Related closely to that is the lack of confidence pastors seem to have in the Word and in their call to proclaim it. And so there is this sense, well, I have to adapt my proclamation to what I sense is being successful down the road or to what my members say their friends are hearing at their church. And when one begins to lose confidence both in one's call to proclaim and in the Word one is proclaiming and try to adapt it to this marketplace, I think um, that becomes so inhibiting it almost becomes paralyzing for the preacher. But those are real realities of the culture in which we live.